Hello, everyone. Welcome. It's two o'clock on the dot. I'm at home teaching from some school. Hey, guys. Welcome. Welcome. It is April 1st, April Fool's Day. I forgot. Oh, my gosh. But we're not fooling you today. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to back. I'm back at home. So um, I was teaching from the North School yesterday because I had to go up there and then um, get some items together. So um, anyhow, I heard you guys have been some busy little bees. How did I scare you? Am I too loud? Or am I just that ugly? <laughs> Oh, goodness. Hey, guys. So go ahead and start your roll call, just like we want to do, okay? So make sure to comment your name and your location and let us know that you're here. Um, that way we can get our roll call going and get you all your credit for these two hours. Hey, welcome, everybody. Welcome. I'm going to go and call out some names. I always like to do that to make sure you know that I see you. Hey, Cassie and Brenna and Brianna Barnes and Emmy, Emmy, oh, I cannot talk. Hey, Emily Malila. Hey, um, uh, Mabry and Carmen and Kayla Langford, Lynn Thornhill, uh, Larissa Guandique, uh, Katie Vo, Annabelle Smith, Alexia, and Alicia, uh, Annalicia Siciliano. Carson Ivy, hey Connie, um, Marbella, Tabitha Kelly, uh, Marisol, Sam Sladish, Chloe, Miranda, um, Erica Enman, Allison Cypress, Leslie Montenegro, Olivia Fleck, Jazzy Grubbs, welcome back, missed you the last couple of days, Marina, Samantha, Samantha Cap, I was going to say that, Sam Samantha. Morgan Martinez, Kylie Cunningham, Hey Destiny, McKenna, Marina, Mary Helen, Yasmin, uh, Lilla, Annabelle Smith, Ava Muller, Stacy Cotta, uh, Promise, Deg, uh, and Barbie, and Brenna, uh, Brenna Womack, I mentioned you, um, Lauren Rivera, um, Brianna Barnes, I mentioned you as well, Annabelle Smith, oops. My little thing skip forward. Sydney Ibabuchi. Um, where'd I go? I scrolled and um uh, hmm. Morgan Martinez, Vicky Atkinson, hey, Destiny, Serena to where did it scrolls up? Wow, it just keeps moving on me. Serena to Arena, hey Kim, hey Lauren Baldwin, hey Sarah Barons, Liz Hernandez, um uh Roselle and welcome, Jasmine Barker. And uh, Monica Murga, as you guys all come in, why don't you hit the like button? Give me some love up here. I think it's up here at the top, right up here. Well, I'm looking at it there. Or maybe it's down there or to the side, to the left, to the right. Hit me up. Um, Lauren Garabini. Uh, uh, Gar I slaughtered that Lauren. Sorry. April Grant. Uh, welcome, you guys. Welcome. <laughs> so as I start to filter, make sure that you're getting yourself some credit. I know you guys have been stressing um, with these handouts. Uh, I get it. Um, there's a lot of paper there, and you may not have a printer. I know I don't. So yesterday at the North School, I was I was lucky enough to make it up there. Hey, Julia and Crystal Hartman and Hannah Broadway, welcome. Um, yeah, yesterday at the North School, I got to go ahead and print out some things so I could do some notes for you guys and stuff, and I cover those terms, the vocabulary. Hi, Laura Lopez. Um, but wanted to make sure that I got you that information, and my handwriting isn't the greatest, so printing works better. Um, you know, uh, high cord. Uh, we as hairstylists, you know, um, are usually creative and artistic and all that good stuff. But for some reason, I didn't get the flowery handwriting. Like after a while, it starts to look like a two year old. I'm like, you're lucky if you can read it. And, uh, um, you know, the whole, you guys, uh, um, uh, with these handouts and stuff, I know so, several of you were like, Oh my God, this is a skeleton. I don't have a printer, you know, and all that stuff. And how do I, um, how do I go about getting that information to Molly and returning it and all that stuff? Hey, top of the Kelly. Oh, really, Tabitha? Uh, uh, Tabitha is mentioning there's a great website through Gmail, maybe called Doc Hub. 
Hmm. For doing worksheets online. Hmm. When you say doing worksheets online, Tabitha, do you like completing them? You know, like you're able to do them? Hmm. I don't know. There was a, um, I know that on my phone, I, I, I told you guys yesterday, I think when uh, um, uh, one of the students, um, Murray Lord from the South School needed me to fill out a form and I didn't have a printer. My phone, I could actually edit the document and write on it and stuff or type text and stuff. So maybe you guys might have an option that way. But anyway, I don't want you guys to stress. Don't stress, okay? If you're not like a, a, a regular Van Gogh and you can't draw the skeleton and everything, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Do you draw a stick figure, girl? No big deal. Or guy. Um, hey, Alyssa Brand of Chloe Long and uh, Tabitha Kelly. It's called Doc Hub. And yes, she can type. Oh, good. That's great to know. Let me write that down, girl, because um, Doc Hub. Thanks. We like the tips. We like some tips. Um, so if you got some skills or anything, um, I don't, I haven't seen her yet. Victoria Pierce, are you there with us, girl? We've got a new one in the house. Um, you guys all throw your hands together for Victoria Pierce. Hopefully she's on here. Um, haven't seen her chime in yet for roll call. Hopefully she'll be getting on pretty soon. Hi, Brianna. Brianna Alonzo didn't hear my name. Call. No, you didn't, but now you did. <laughs> hey, Brianna Alonzo, and hey, Joanna. Welcome. Hey, Melissa. So, yeah. Uh, uh, welcome, Victoria. Yes. I don't know. I haven't seen her chime. I haven't seen her. Did she roll call? Victoria Pierce. Anyway, you guys will love her. Um, she's going to be attending South once we uh, uh, get classes rolling in person. Until then, we're just in the chat rooms, whooping it up, right? <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, hey guys. So yeah. Um, but anyway, like I said, I want, I wanted you to take the stress, take the stress off of you. Don't worry about getting, um, uh, being a Picasso or a, um, a Rembrandt or whatever and, and drawing all these things. You can draw a stick figure and diagram. It's just the act of actually writing that helps you retain the information, whether or not you realize it at the time, or it could be frustrating, perhaps, maybe, you know, or disappointing, because I know some of you are real perfectionists. Um, um, hey, Mary Helen, and want to make sure Destiny got y'all. Okay. Um, uh, wanna, you know, some of y'all are really perfectionists, and I am too at times, and it can really stress you out when you're not able to do your best or what you think is your best. Um, um, but I want to tell you guys, um, you know, we see you, we know you're there. We know you're, um, uh, I had another student contact me. Oh my God. Um, I'm turning in my assignments late, you know, and things like that. Um, you know, and, and don't want to lose your credit. Um, I not turning in assignment assignment would be a problem, you know, and, and don't want to lose your credit. Um, I not turning in assignment assignment would be a problem, not giving me an assignment. You know, um, if it's a little late, I get it. You know, some of you have extenuating circumstances. Like I was talking to somebody the other day, she was talking about, I'm trying to feed my kid and teach them and, and, you know, and, and then I've got all this stuff going on. Hey, Victoria. Hey, yeah. Okay, cool. I've roll called already. Okay. I came on. A, I had set up this it's scheduled. You guys must've been in the chat before me. Well, welcome Victoria. Yay. Um, uh, glad you're here. But yeah, because uh, I, I scheduled this video uh, ahead of time before too, so y'all were able to kind of come on and get in there. And I wasn't there yet. Hey, Amber Crumb. Wait. Oh, Amber Wood. Sorry, Amber. Amber. Amber Amanda. Um, Jennifer Orr. Hey, welcome. Oh uh, yeah, those pictures were your April Fools. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those those diagrams were April Fools. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to try, try to take the stress off of you, you know, and, and I know you want to be perfectionist and want to do everything the right way, but we're all having to remember what I told you guys in the morning. We all have to kind of resign ourselves to this is the best we can do at the moment. We have to let go of some of that stuff. You know, what have you done uh, to keep yourself motivated? What have, have you reached out to anybody and, and, and uh, communicated uh, with any of your friends and stuff like that? Try to stay motivated, you know, do little things that you can. Um, oh, your video's frozen? Well, I hope you can still hear me. Um, basically what I'm gonna be doing, since I couldn't print out either, um, I am uh, gonna be kind of doing things, giving you some definitions and some terms and stuff. And so we're gonna be going over your handouts, your skeletal handouts. You should have had a, um, a, a rather large skeleton. I'm gonna scroll through right now. I wish, 
Um, I was kind of trying to check it out to see if I could flip screen, if you could see my computer screen. Um, I even kind of thought about doing like a, a mirror, you know, like those cooking shows that there's an overhead mirror where you can see like my work surface, you know, uh, like an old fashioned overhead projector like they used to use in elementary school, you know. Uh, but yeah, uh, so let me go ahead and look. I'm going to pull them up. Yeah, there was a total of, there was a one big, huge skeleton that had a ton of um diagramming to do on that one that you guys should have done. I believe that I counted, there were a total of 25 different terms on that one skeleton, the huge guy, the one with the oogly eyes. Then you had um, a leg. <laughs> Some of you guys, it's so funny, when, I, when you first look at it, it may look like an animal leg, but really, if you think about it, it's a runner, you know, it's in the running position with the toes. So you got your leg diagram that we're going to go ahead and do together. And then you've got your skull, your skull, okay? your cranium and your facial skeleton, you know, all that. So you've got that to do. And then of course, we, then we have our upper arm, you know, our clavicle and all that to diagram. And she wanted you to write in some definitions of those just to kind of make sure and check for understanding. And then of course we've got another skeleton man, you know, walking to list just as many as you can that you're able to. I've got some alternate terms for some of these things, you guys, because there's more, names for this stuff than you would believe um you know if you get really in depth with anatomy and you do some research i mean it's like you're becoming a doctor a medical doctor it gets crazy um so anyway we'll go over those and we'll uh, talk about a few things together as we go and then there was another squat little um uh uh man as well that had little boxes for you to fill out and so we'll cover all those so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start let me go back to my screen here and see you guys. Hi, Carmen. I would be. Oh, you can see us now. Yay. I thought I broke your computer there for a moment, Erica. <laughs> All right. Um, Let's see here. There was a text message that Wendy had sent me. These teachers with this text thread, you guys, sometimes she'll tell me something and it'll get buried, absolutely buried. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to make things a lot easier because there was a ton of terminology um, with the muscles and stuff that are going to be going out and that you guys have been working on. And your little hands are probably just like, oh, my God, breaking. So we are going to try to we're trying to kind of limit uh, the amount of stuff that we're covering. So we're kind of, you know, bite sized pieces, guys. Um, all right. So what we're going to be getting back into, you guys, is we're going to start talking about the skeletal system. Okay. So if you have your diagrams printed out, pull them out, get them out on the top of the table. If you've handwritten on notebook paper or better not have written on that toilet paper since it's so precious these days, right? Um, <laughs> but written down on some sort of paper, get it out. Get your stick figures out if you've driven, drawn them up. Okay. That turned my camera really warm when I did that. Okay. So we're covering the skeletal system again. So your first diagram, okay, just kind of as a review. Your skeleton system, right, was made up of how many bones? 206. That's a lot of bones. Them bones, them bones, them bones. And uh, um, originally when we were talking about it, you know, that uh, there's 300, you know, bones when you first are born, but then they all later on fuse together. Um, and uh, bones are connected from one to another in a, in a joint form. A joint is something that connects two bones together. Um, and there are two types of joints. There's movable and immovable. And we talked about that in those movable joints, there were tendons and things um, uh, that were that tish connective tissue, that rough connective uh, tissue that helps to allow for movement. Um, so we hit on that uh, yesterday. 
We also talked about, um, gen uh, in general, the skeletal system is made up of those bones. And we know that the word os is the prefix or the word for that means bone. And osteology is obviously the study of those bones and their structures. Um, we talked about the benefits of the skeleton uh, or what it does for the body, that it provides structure. Um, it also helps to protect the internal organs and uh, um, allows for movement. So there's a lot of benefits to having a skeleton. All right. Um, then we went into the skull. We talked about the difference between the skull and the cranium. The skull is a the skull and the head is one and the same, and it's subdivided into two. Where we have the cranium area and those bones, those eight bones, and then we have the facial skeleton with those fourteen bones. So it's a total of twenty-two overall for your entire skull or head. Okay. We went through each of those and we uh, defined um, the facial skeleton bones. And uh, then we also defined the cranial bones as well. Um, we talked about with the skeleton, uh, the facial skeleton, there are uh, 14 bones that comprise uh, the facial skeleton. However, of those 14, only nine were involved in the servicing when we're doing massage during a facial. There's only nine that are actually affected. There are other bones that are behind the scenes, if you will, the, um, the, uh, behind the starting lineup that, you know, are important, but they're not involved in those services, but we still define them. And so you guys know what they are. Then when we talk about the, uh, the bones, of course, of the cranium, there were typically um, eight bones of those, or, you know, fewer of the cranium. Uh, but really, honestly, only six of those bones were affected when we we're doing scalp massage or head treatments. Okay. Within that area, there are a few others. There were two that were left out. Um, that we do not affect, obviously, because there are a total of 22 bones. Okay, so that's what we were talking about yesterday. Um, then we actually got on and we went on to the leg. You got covered the hand and arm with Alana. So this will be, um, uh, this information will be uh, more of a review and, and just to kind of, a, uh, to, as a reminder. So we talked about yesterday, I did the leg and the foot. Okay consisting of um, the upper portion and then, of course, the foot. So bones of the leg and then also of the foot, since what we covered yesterday. So we're going to be kind of picking up where we left off. All right. So if you guys will get out your drawings for me, your stick figures, and we're going to go down the list. If you look at the first diagram, that's the one that's got the full on mannequin with the oogly eyes. Okay. I don't have him. I didn't draw him for you. You would have laughed at me anyway. <laughs> um, but uh, anyhow, so we're going to go get those up. We're going to label them from top to bottom. We're going to start with number one. On your diagram of the full mannequin, mannequin, the full skeleton, number one should be what? Should be the skull. We should label that the skull, okay? Number two, within the skull, that's right, the skull, within the skull, what do we have? The skull or the cranium would be sufficient for number one, that's right, skull or the cranium. Now, number two, however, It is pointing to what we are going to call the orbital cavity or eye socket. You're right. Lacrimal is within the eye socket too. So lacrimal is not a terrible, um, uh, but we're not actually doing the bones of the face per se. We're just talking about overall. So really it's the orbital cavity. When we're looking at the entire skeleton from a distance, it's the orbital cavity. That's right. The orbital cavity. So we have the skull or cranium, right? Then we have the orbital cavity where your eyes go, right? Then number three, it's pointing in this direction. So if we think just like the orbital cavity, what would we call this area on number three? The nasal cavity, exactly, Crystal. 
Good, Melissa. Orbital cavity for the eyes, nasal cavity for the nose and sinus. That's right. If you were talking about the actual facial skeleton, they, they're even called nasal bones. But as a whole, when we're doing a, the, the broad uh, anatomy, okay, macro, thinking about the whole, it's the nasal cavity. Not just nasal bones, it's the nasal cavity. Okay. Number four, what do we call this on the diagram? It's right here. Right here. That's right. That's right, the clavicle. The clavicle can also obviously be called the collarbone. You know, we typically call that the collarbone. That bone, I've never had it broken, but I had a friend that broke his, and it was pretty painful. It's something that you really can't wear a cast for, you know. It's kind of terrible. That's called the clavicle. You might want to call it the collarbone. Now down below, number five, what is that pointing to? <laughs> Eyes get real big. Number five, what was that pointing to? Well, welcome back, Carson. No big deal. Try not to panic, you guys, when if you got if things happen, little glitches, you know, chat. You know, don't worry. You know, main important thing is that you're participating. That's right. It's that's right. The cervical vertebrae. Laura and Crystal, exactly. The vertebrae, cer cervical vertebrae. That's what number five is pointing to, your cervical vertebrae, your discs, right? The next one, number six, makes me want to sing that song, the leg bones connected to the knee bone. <laughs> number six, that's right. It's the shoulder blade or scapula faith. That's right. The shoulder or scapula. Shoulder bone or scapula. The scapula is the, of course, the official, you know, anatomical terminology, you know, wearing my professor's hat. The shoulder blade is something that we call it every day. Shoulder blade or the scapula. Shoulder blade or scapula. Then we have number seven. Number seven, there's many of them. Remember, they are protecting your internal organs. Number seven are the ribs. That's right. Overall, it's called a rib cage, but an individual rib. And they connect in the center, right? But they're a framework to protect those internal organs that are necessary for life. That's right, the ribs. It's pointing to the ribs. Those ribs, like I was talking about yesterday, your lungs are essentially just these large airbags, and they're they're actually quite um, fragile, um, you know. And so it's it'd be important to protect those as they expand and contract your heart is very um you know it's right there as well so that's like your uh, your protection your armor thoracic vertebrae i love that <laughs> oh i like that emoji with the with the glasses joanna that's cute <laughs> all right so after our rib we're gonna go to our arm the muscles yeah What's this bone? What's this bone? This bad guy. Yeah. The humerus. That's right, humerus. You're still funny. The humerus bone. It's where your bicep is attached as well, but it's the upper part of your arm. The humerus. That's right, the humerus. 
Then just below that, the lower part of your arm, okay, there's actually two bones. This is just one bone, your upper arm, but we've got two. Think about those chicken wings y'all eat all the time. I know y'all love them chicken wings. You got to get the meat between them two little bones, right? You have the two joints on the end, you crack them, twist them, and then the meat just comes right off them two little bones. I know y'all like them chicken wings. Or just the same. We've got a chicken wing right here. There's two bones. You think about it. Okay. you got two of them. You've got the radius and the ulna. Now, number nine technically is the ulna. Okay. I know that in the past when we've done these diagrams, because these diagrams are kind of... <laughs> Um, not always the best contrast. Some of the, sometimes the hands will be backwards and everybody gets confused. Oh man, my scar looks bad on camera. Ugh. Anyway, um, it always we always differentiate between the two depending on which one's on the pinky side and which one's on the thumb side. And everyone gets all heated. Oh well, you know, well that one's on the thumb side, and you know the diagram looks different. Well, in this diagram, number nine is actually the ulna, and number 10 is the radius. Now, let's define that. Let's go be clear. The ulna is the thinner, longer bone in the lower arm. Thinner, longer, okay? And it is the one that's technically on the pinky side. Pinky, okay? That's the ulna. Now, the radius, it's the one that's on top, right, on the thumb side because it turns, if you think about radial, radi, you know, things like that, it turns. This one, stay, the one on the bottom doesn't move. The one on top is the one that wraps over and moves back and forth as we turn our arm. That's right. On the pinky side, radius, thumb side. That's exactly right, Monica. Okay. So the English language helps us to understand the words that they're, you know, words that we use. Uh, there are parts or components of the word that can help you realize what it truly means. So radius, radial, turning, I don't know. Anyway, maybe that'll help you. The number 11, we're talking about the hand, right? Number 11 is pointing at the, the carpus, the carpus or the wrist, carpal bones, yeah. Good, Tabitha, yes. Okay. This is called the carpus or the wrist. Now, number 12, the back of your hand, the top of your hand, of course, is the meta, metacarpus or metacarpals, however you want to do that. The back of your hand, the bone that gets before it gets to your finger. Y'all, this the camera, God, my skin looks. I look like I'm dying. What the hell? <laughs> I'm like, <"Ugh." laughs> this is the metacarpals. There's five of them. Just like there are five of your fingers. But if you're genetically modified, you guys, you got six fingers. I'm not hating. Okay. You got six. Or maybe you got four. I don't know. It's okay. We love you. One love. Okay. So metacarpals or metacarpus. Okay. Now, number 13, it got a little lower, okay? We all we always usually generically call these. What do we usually call these? Fingers. Oh, were you Mary Helen? I watched that um, uh, My Feet Are Killing Me thing on, on the Learning Channel or whatever. That's pretty interesting. I saw a woman there with that, and they cut it off, cut off her toes. Yes. Oh, goodness, Mary Helen. Yes, you guys, proximal. Middle and distal. Proximal, middle, and distal are going to be 13, 14, and 15. These are your flanges, your fingers. Normally, we just broad spectrum, just label them flanges, but this diagram cut them up into three. We've got proximal, okay, which is closest to the joint. We've got the middle, which is the, fa the middle phalanx, and then distal. Distal means distant. We're talking about the spacing from the joint. Proximal means it's right there. It's approximate, you know, uh, approximately here, right? Proximal. Uh, middle is obviously the middle. And then distal, it's distance from a distance, right? Okay, so does that make sense? 
So there were the three of them, 14, 15, and, I'm sorry, 13, 14, and 15. Proximal phalanx, 14 is middle phalanx, and 15 is distal. There's the word distance in, I mean, distal, distant, you know, the farthest away. That should help. Distal phalanges. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to move from the hand, you guys, and we're going to go down to the leg. We're going to go down to the leg. We've got number 16. Oh, is that why you're confused? Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, you know, the whole purpose, you guys, is we are a Pivot Point membership school, and we use predominantly Pivot Point teachings, um, and they're used all over the world, so you guys are no different than any other success. You're going to be just as successful. But we also pull from My Lady and other places because we try to bring you a well-rounded uh, terminology because at State Board, sometimes things get confusing, and they want to trip you up with um, uh, the way they word their questions. And so if we're bringing you a vast, wide array of terminology – that when you get in the testing booth um, to test on that computer, multiple choice, that you will hear or remember maybe these terms we've discussed and they will help you to figure out the best answer for you if you maybe don't know. Because some of our students do um, have had in the past testing anxiety um, and get a little nervous and then it's like your brain shuts off. But we're going to go through this stuff and you guys will be just fine. So yes, number 16, uh, you guys have already started answering. We're talking about the leg. We got the fibula. The fibula. Okay, number 16 is the fibula. Now with the fibula, we also, what do we also call the fibula? Oh, thank you, Laura. That's even more uh, specific about uh, proximal and distal. Okay. You're talking about the body. I was I was referring to the joint. <laughs> my little my little nurses, my nurses and doctors in here. Well, not the shin, not the fibula. The fibula isn't the the shin. the The fibula is going to be more like the calf bone. Oh, you jumped to seventeen. Okay. <laughs> then the, the number 17 is the shimmer. Okay, so Crystal got ahead over here. So number 16 is fibula, yes, which is going to be more your calf bone. It's going to be the smaller of your two leg bones. So just, um, it didn't, wait, where was, number 23, the bigger bone up at the top is femur. Um, it, we didn't, it didn't go in order for some reason. The numbering of it didn't go straight to the femur. The feet, number 23 is femur. That's the, the big bone of the leg. Just like your arm, we've got one bone coming directly off the body. Your leg is the same way. You got the femur, but down below past that, like with your arm, we had the ulna and the radius. Your leg has the same thing. It's got the tibia and the fibula. Okay. So number, number uh, 16 was the fibula or the calf bone, which is the smaller of those two bones, okay? And then the tibia is the larger of the bone in the lower leg that's known as the shin bone, okay? So uh, uh, Crystal got a little head there, which is cool. She's smart, so she's trying to knock it out. I get it. All right, so um, then we have number 18, 19, and 20, guys. These are going to be the same as the hand, um, 18, 19, and 20 are going to be the same as 13, 14, and 15. They're still going to be called the same thing. The distal phalanx, the, the I'm sorry, the proximal phalanx, the middle phalanx, and the distal phalanx, because it's the same, whether it's fingers or toes, you guys. It's the same. Okay. So 18, 19, and 20 on your diagram are going to be the same that you did with the fingers up here. The proximal, middle, and distal uh, phalanxes or phalanges. You're going to do the same thing with your toes. That's right. Phalanges or ph uh, phalanx. Phalanx, P-H-A-L-A-N-X. That's cool, Sarah. I'm glad you're taking notes. It's important. It helps you retain the information. So, yeah, that was referring to the foot, the toes. Okay. Then immediately following that, so 18, 19, and 20 are the same as the hand. We have the proximal phalanx or phalanges, middle and distal. So moving on to number 21, okay, number 21 is kind of the same area as we were talking about the carpus here. Same thing. 
It's the tarsal, tarsal area, tarsals, tarsus. I like that. Yeah. It's okay, McKenna. You don't have to uh, necessarily get everyone and respond as long as you're here. It still makes me happy. I'm glad. Welcome, Cam Root. <laughs> yes. So it's the tarsals. Then, of course, in that area, too, you know, you got the tarsals and then, of course, metatarsals later. But it's not really diagrammed that way on that, that particular one. Good job. You guys got it. The next one, number 22. What do we call that? The knee. Patella. That's right. Patella. That helps to protect the knee joint. It's the kneecap, essentially. The patella is the kneecap. Somebody said yesterday, <laughs> did y'all say the babies aren't born with, with kneecaps at first? I was like, wow, I did not realize that. Or at least then, you know, hadn't really come up. That's right, patella. Babies are strange little aliens to me. <laughs> I'm glad y'all can do it because I can't. My cats are sitting in the window right now. Um, looking outside, I opened up the window for them. You know what's so weird is that I, you know, fresh air, I've been wanting it. And yesterday I went out. And then now they're talking about like here in Bastrop, they're, you know, after midnight, there was everything's on lockdown here. And I'm like, Ugh. and um, I opened up the window today. And then as soon as I did, I smelled like some kind of chemical coming through the window. And I'm like, oh, I'm getting gas. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I got the window open now and the cats are enjoying it. Um, speaking of cats, um, <laughs> there's this book uh, that's it's old that I found in my in my thing, um, my cabinet, called Bad Cat. It's pretty funny. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. It's so old, it's kind of broken apart. The pages are coming out because I actually disassembled it and I made um, back in my little. Oh, do you have that book? It's so funny, isn't it, Crystal? <laughs> the little captions and the cat's names and stuff. But I actually broke it down and I uh, framed uh, some of the pictures. They were so cute because I was looking for decoration ideas and I was making gifts and stuff for people. Um, uh, yeah, this cat does look mean. He's got a little snaggle tooth. <laughs> They have that ugliest dog competition. Uh, so funny. But uh, uh, one of these I was looking at, it's so cute. I was trying to find some for you guys because I thought it was funny. Uh, it says here, that was fun. Now let's try Whip. It has the cat's name. His name's Kevin. He's got a goldfish and the dang blender. <laughs> I just think these things are hilarious. <laughs> this one here, <laughs> they give it little captions. Her name's Marilyn. She's four. Her hobby is decoupage. She sprawled out. She says, stop crying and cuff me. <laughs> they got little cute captions. Uh, you know, I'm in. So funny. This one. <laughs> Klaus. Oh yeah, my my cat from hell. That's funny too. Uh, yeah, he actually has some really good tips and stuff because I had a problem with my cat wet uh, marking that the apartment and stuff because they're weird. You have to have like so many litter boxes. Oh, this is cute. Um, but yeah, they're so strange that they won't poop and pee in the same litter box. You gotta have. They're supposed to have uh, one more litter box than the number of cats you have, and and. 
you know, I always I have a water fountain, you know, because they don't want to drink out of the water bowl. They want their water running. They are super particular. They really are. This one's really cool. Her name is Rafina. Um, she's in her middle years. Her hobby is belly dancing. And she says, my whole family's big boned. Look at that big old girl. <laughs> my friend had a cat just like that, like a little watermelon on legs. Now, my dank, um, uh, my gray cat, he is so big, y'all, he can't even lick his butt. I have to wet wipe him. And I didn't do that. I did not feed him that much. I guess somehow I did. I don't know. It was, either, it was my ex. It's his fault. It's his cat. I shouldn't say that. He's my cat. But we got him together. But. I'm not getting child support. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Just adopted our first cat ever three weeks ago. Oh, we love him. They're very different. Yeah. Big fluffy ones. Only thing is sometimes their hair. I know what a chonky cat. How funny. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, if I can get around away from doing the hair thing, like brushing them and stuff, it's like, gosh, because the hair gets everywhere. But I thought about shaving them. But I don't like those hairless cats. They look weird. They look like aliens. But. <laughs> All right. And so we just have a couple more. Um, so we talked about number 22 being the patella. Number 23, there's three more. Number 23 is the femur, which is the big bone of the leg. <laughs> So the femur is the big bone of the leg. Number 24 is, uh, hold on one second. Now the number 24 is called the Cossacks. Cossacks. Okay. It is a small triangular bone at the base of the spinal column. Okay. It's a form of fused vertebrae that come together. Cossacks. Where'd my video go? Cossacks. <laughs> Cossacks, yeah. And then number 25 is, you know, they labeled it the body of the sternum. Um, it's, it, you know, it is the sternum. But number 25 is where your ribs are interconnected, where they're connected to. Okay. Body of the sternum, that's right. All right, so that should complete your... Um, your bad boy there. Now let's go ahead and turn the page to your lower leg. And we should be able to knock those out really quick because we just did them yesterday. So you guys should be able to knock them out. Number one, we just covered it, femur. Number two, fibula. Number three were the meta uh, the metatarsals. Number four is actually pointing towards, that's right, number one is the femur. Number two is the fibula. Victoria, I, um, there you go, okay. So I'm sorry, I, I don't know if you got to print them out or not, Victoria. Some of the girls do and some of the girls don't, but just write them down. No big deal. But number one is the femur, the largest, longest bone of the leg. Okay. Largest one of the body. Two is the fibula. Three are the metatarsals. That's right. Four are the digits or phalanges. Digits or phalanges is number four. Then we have five, which are the tarsals. Number six is pointing to the tibia. The tibia.
And then, of course, we had number seven, the patella. Oh, 25 back on the other diagram on the first one was the uh, was the, the sternum. Number 25 on the other one was the sternum. That was the last one of the entire skeleton we did, Carson. And then we flipped over and did the um, the other one, which was the leg. That's right. The last one, number seven, is patella. You guys got it. Yay. Okay. See, repetitive. You, you know it. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. All right. Now let's get out your skull. That ugly little skull. When I have some revisions to make and we got to talk, let's talk about that skeleton, the, the, the facial skeleton. Okay. Let's talk. Get it out. Let's talk about it because it needs to be corrected. I didn't like it. Didn't like it. Not one bit. No. <laughs> Y'all remember, y'all are too young. Oh my God. But Saturday Night Live used to have coffee talk with, um, oh God. Um, ugh. who did coffee talk? Oh my God. I can't, um, 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 Adam Sandler coffee talk and, um, who else? Coffee talk. Didn't like it. Didn't, 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 I can't talk in that voice like it either. Yeah, I know you didn't. I know you guys didn't like it either. Um, I got frustrated with that little diagram because it's like some things, you know, what you have to understand and what I was talking about um, uh, with Kim too is, uh, oh, okay, your internet's lagging. I get it. Okay, everyone, um, calm down. <laughs> oh, you made me, I'm breaking out of sweat now. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, okay, now we're talking about the <laughs> we're talking about the facial skeleton, and I was uh, oh, it's an SNL skit. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that too. Oh, that's right, Annabelle. That's funny. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I, I completely spaced that out. But when you mentioned that in, in an SNL skit, that's right. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. <laughs> if you guys can search it out on the internet, you really should. <laughs> you know, it's just funny. All right. So we're talking about that facial skeleton and how much I didn't like it. And I know you guys didn't like it either. Um, and my part of it is, like I was explaining to you, I had a conversation with Kim about this too. Um, that when we're getting into anatomy, you know, and we're really getting down to it, you know, a physician, you know, that's going to be operating on tiny little, you know, vesicles and, you know, uh, uh, vessels in the brain and nerves and things like that and have to take into consideration microscopic anatomy, their training is super intense. And I mean, if we got down to it, you guys, and really got microscopic, with this stuff, there's going to be a ton of structures in, in, in there, you know. So these diagrams and stuff that sometimes get snatched up have labelings for things that we really don't need to concern ourselves with. Okay. So I, I felt a couple of them uh, can be eliminated off that diagram entirely. So um, <laughs> you're watching Grey's Anatomy at the same time. <laughs> oh, I never really got off to it. Was that, is that the one with Dr. Dreamy? Um, see, I remember that kid back when um, he was just learning to become an actor or whatever, and he was in that uh, that movie where he's delivering pizza as a gigolo. With um, uh, oh my god, that's back when um, Kirsty uh, uh, Kirsty Alley was thin, and she had you know back then, back in the day, McDreamy, yeah, Doctor McDreamy. I'm sorry, uh, who's that other guy? Um, oh my gosh, I can't think of my celebrities at the moment. I'd rather have someone a little bit more, I don't know, make steamy. Y'all are funny. Anyway, with microscopic anatomy, there's a ton of different you know parts and stuff. So there's stuff that we don't even need to notice. So I've eliminated two of these. So get your skull out. Number one is talking about your three or four. Remember I was talking about yesterday? You know, your hairline may be lower and you may have a smaller. So when you're doing your facials, you may, may only be able to use two fingers instead of three or your whole hand. You know, 
We may even do, <laughs> I've had facials where I've just used my ring finger because there's just nowhere to go because their hair is so low, you know, but it's your frontal bone, your frontal, you know, you've heard of frontal, you know, when we're referring to hair additions, right? She's got a frontal piece. Okay. So it's your frontal. Then number two, now, okay, now we're going to call this our nasal bone. Now we're referring to the actual nasal bones. On the other diagram, uh, we called it the nasal cavity. These are actually your nasal bones. There's two of them that form the bridge of your nose. Number three, right? Zygomatic. Zygomatic. Okay. Number three, zygomatic. Zygomatic addicts insane. I don't know. I was trying to make that into a song or something or blend it. Then we have number four, our upper jaw. What do we call that? There's two bones. Maxillae, right? They're maxillae. Forms the upper roof of your mouth and stuff, your upper jaw. Maxillae, that's right. You got it. Maxillae. Then at number five, okay, look at number five and number 13. This is where we're getting into that change up. I think that you can just... Um, Number 13 is actually pointing to the same thing as number five. It's the mandible. But number 13 on other diagrams is really called the um, the mental protuberance or forearm. Laura, tell me what it is. Where's my nurses? Mental, they refer to it as mental for some reason. Yeah, mental forearm. There you go. Yeah, more <laughs> foreman, for, forum, foreman. Maybe that's how you spell it. Forearm. I thought they called it forearm. Foreman. Okay, yeah. Number 13 would be the mental foreman. Yeah. I was going to eliminate it, but if you want to put it on there, you know, cool. So number five is the actual mandible and the 13, which is pointing like over here. So mental foramen. Okay. I'm mental foramen. <laughs> Not foramen. That was, a, sorry. That was a, I guess I was trying to make a pun or something. Foramen. Okay. That's how you say it. Foramen. Or for ramen, ramen noodles. No, just kidding. All right. So number six, we're getting into the cranium, right? Number six, they are the parietal bones. Parietal. Pair, P-E-R, I-E-T-A-L. I -E -T -A -L. Parietal. That's right. Two of them. Parietal. That's going to form the crown, right, of the head. Parietal bones. Then we have, above the ear, we have the temporal. Number seven is temporal. <clears throat> That's right. Temporal. Temporal. Mm -hmm. Now, number eight, 
Number eight is the one that we always use all the time. I told you about that yesterday. We're concerned with that area whenever we're styling hair. You know, we always want to make sure the hair is being dried when we're blow dry. Get that occipital area. We refer to it when we're talking about the head and head shapes and stuff. And, we're, you know, uh, we refer to it because it's, it's, a, um, it's a protruding area that is uh, used. Um, we use it as a descriptor, as a, a point of reference. Occipital bone. Oh, Brianna. Be careful. Okay. So that's occipital. Now, number nine. Number nine. Like what? <clears throat> Not all diagrams actually diagram that bone right there, number nine. Let me hear and see what you got. What'd y'all write down for number nine on your diagram? I want to know. Yeah, you got it. The sphenoid. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys did right. That's good. At first, when I looked at it, though, I was like, yeah, what is that? The Sphenoid. <laughs> Good job, you guys. You guys are doing great. Sphenoid. Just a couple more and then we'll take our break, okay? Brianna already cut her toe, so she had to go. <laughs> I'm not laughing at her. I'm just laughing. Anyway, sorry. Um, number 10. Number 10 is pointing to uh, lacrimal, lacrimal. Heard my phone, where'd it go? Lacrimal. You guys are already well. You should have you should have already turned it into Molly, and I'm I was just going over it with you, right? Because you guys got these from Molly. Or they sent them to you this morning. You were supposed to turn them into her at 2 o'clock. But then I'm going over them with you. All right, so number, uh, number 10 is lacrimal. Now, number 11, let me go back to the diagram. Okay, 3 o'clock is cool. You guys, I'm not going to beat you up over what time you send it. Just send it, okay? It's okay. It's just fine. I was talking to the girls today. I was like, get it to them. Now, if you didn't turn it in, then it'd be a problem. But just get it to me. I'll get you your hours of progress. <clears throat> okay, so try not to stress. Oh, my God. Elizabeth, where are you throwing those terms around? Number 11? Um. <clears throat> I have to look at my diagram. I eliminated it entirely, but Elizabeth is showing out right now. Where'd my diagram go? Elizabeth, you are showing out, and I'm glad. You know it. You know that information. I'm proud of you. Um, well, let me go back and look at your diagram. Yeah, number 11. It's, another, it's like number 13 was. Um, so I kind of eliminated it, but Elizabeth, she's got the answer. Elizabeth says it's the infraorbital foramen. Oh, you were wrong? Oh, it's intraorbital. See, I mean, really. Oh, Annabelle, they're there. <coughs> I 
I wasn't going to worry about it. <clears throat> Honestly, I was going to eliminate it. Because I got, to, I got, as I was researching, I was like, what? <laughs> If I would have sent it to you, I would have just widened it out. You wouldn't even known it was there. <laughs> you should get extra credit for that, though, Elizabeth and Felice. Yeah. All right. Now, number 12. Number 12. Right? That vertical bone. What's it called? Vomer. That's right, Monica. Perfect. Yay. Just two more and then we'll take a break. But you can't take a nap, Ava. I'm not going to, I'm probably not going to keep you all the way till four. It just depends on if we can get through this stuff. Okay. Vomer. Exactly. Vomer. That vertical bone within the nasal cavity that separates Vomer. All right. Number 13, we already talked about that. Number 14, that's another occurrence of one that I was going to eliminate for you. I was like, what? What do you want to call number 14? Is it the socket? What do you want to call it? Suborbital, I like that. Everybody's throwing F right out. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, um, <clears throat> when I was in, I was like, what, what you, was it the brow bone? I mean, orbital cavity, right? Exactly, Ava, that's what I was thinking. So I was kind of like, I don't like this diagram. This diagram's fair. Supra orbital notch. Dang, Amber. Look at the brain on this girl. But I'm glad. Supra ciliary. Huh. See, the ethmoid is the bone between the nose that forms the nasal cavity. That's why I didn't think of that. It's actually pointing above. And so I do um, the super super orbital notch was one of the things that I came uh, you know, came across when I was researching it, you know, and then I was thinking, okay, the, uh, the cavity itself, you know, yeah, exactly, Victoria, right, so, I, I, you know, you're not going to get it wrong, you guys, um, I was, I just said, I was going to tell you to eliminate it, not worry about it, you know, because it's like one of those things, so I went and tried to sweat it. All right, you guys, so what we're going to go ahead and do, so what should you put, honestly? Hold on, let me go back. Let me zoom into my picture here. It's really the notch, the, the supra. I felt like it. what best fit it was the supra orbital uh, notch. Super duper. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Super duper. No, not quite, DK1969. You're wrong. Sorry. Um, Y'all ignore him, this person, obviously. Okay. All right, so I hid him away, Mr. DK1969. Yeah. All right, you guys. So uh, um, anyway, let's go ahead and take about a 15-minute break. We'll come back at like 3.20, okay? And we'll finish up. Thanks, Mary Helen, for blocking him. Appreciate it. People pop in, and they, they, they want to be y'all. They want to be you in our public chats. And I'm sorry they're public, but it just makes it easier um, uh, for you guys to watch the videos later. Okay, so come back in about 15 minutes, which will be about 3.20, okay? Uh, take your breaks, and we'll see you back. I'm going to mute, and uh, we'll see you back in about 15 minutes.
Welcome back. Welcome back, cats. <laughs> well, welcome back, Emily. <laughs> All right, welcome back, everybody. Thank you for checking back in. <clears throat> Brianna, how's your toe? Welcome back, everybody. Short little break. I'm glad you guys didn't fall asleep after all. <laughs> So let's go and get out our other handout. The other handout well, there's three more. These will be really quick because you guys have done this already, so it should be just more of a review. Under E. Okay. Sorry to hear that. But we're glad you're sticking it out here. All right. So the next one, um, what am I? it's going to be your upper arm diagram with the boxes to fill in. And it already gave you the terms, and you guys already know them. But let's just review them real quick, okay? So, of course, letter A, they already gave it to you, the clavicle. The clavicle or the shoulder blade or shoulder bone. Well, no, I'm not, sorry, not shoulder blade. Clavicle. I'm thinking scapula. Forgive me. So... Like that, clavicle, the long bone between the shoulder and the breastbone. That's correct, Elizabeth. B is scapula, correct. And C is humerus. The humerus, the large bone of the upper arm. Then we had D. D and E, the two bones of the lower arm. So your definition for D would be radius. It's the thicker, shorter bone. Of the lower arm on the thumb side. That's right, radius. Remember I told you it's the one that turns. And then the ulna, that's right, on E, E is the ulna. It's the thinner, longer one on the pinky side. So I hope you included that on your definition as well. I hope you're starting to use that to be your memory. Don't touch your face, don't touch your face, don't touch your face. So hard. I went over there and pet the cat, and then I was all like, oh, and I wanted to start to touch my face. And... Let's write the old one. Then we have, of course, F. 
Carpels. Well, Kim Root is back. Hey. It's raining, Kim. Hallelujah. It's raining, Kim. <laughs> so metacarpals. I'm sorry, carpals. And then, of course, we had the metacarpals, which was G. So your definition is the carpals are, are the bones that form the wrist. Small, little, irregular shaped bones. I, I My uncle broke his wrist and it will forever, forever be a problem. He's got pins in there from playing volleyball. I like volleyball. And to me, that's like a, you know, I was in football as a, as a kid and that was all contact sports. So volleyball was kind of like, Oh, la di da! Hit the ball over the net, but man, when they're going for it, they can really do some damage. But he broke his wrist, and forever it's going to be arthritic and painful. Then we have the metacarpals, which is the top of the hand, the five long bones before the fingers, right? And then H, we had the simplistic phalanges. We just labeled them phalanges on this diagram. Remember how the other diagram we got into the proximal, middle, and distal phalanxes. But we're just calling them flanges on this one. <laughs> mine too, Kim. Mine too. <clears throat> uh, but I'm actually, I actually put up a tarp for now. I'm not looking for anything to rain down on me right now. I'm like, psh, I done got done sweeping the other, the old wash off the back porch, psh, psh, sweeping him out the door. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm good. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little flooded. All right, so that was that A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. And then she asked for you to give them a small definition. Okay. The scapula? Well, the scapula is the is basically the the shoulder blade. It's the shoulder blade. The scapula is the shoulder blade. That triangular shape kind of in the back. Scapula. Let's see what Merriam Webster says for scapula. Let's see. What she say? Miriam. Or was, or was Miriam a, a man's name back then? Scapula. Plural noun is scapulae. Technical term for shoulder blade. Yeah, that's all it is. Mary didn't have anything else for us on that one. No insight there, Miriam. <laughs> yeah, it's enough. No worries. <laughs> you guys are doing great. All right, so now the next diagram. It's another entire skeleton. Okay, but it's numbered differently. So let's just go through the numbers real quick. You guys, have our, we went in through detail on the other one, the very first one you guys did. We went through detail. Oh, okay, Jennifer. Large flat bone extending from the middle of the back that is attached to the clavicle. Okay. There you go. There's some more detail. Jen's another one of those nurses that we rely on. Or has that medical experience. Miss you guys, man. Miss seeing y'all's faces every day. I can just picture little Jen with her smile and, you know, busy and tired. Dragging in from, you know, from home, come to school, get your hours in, and dealing with all the kids. Yeah, that <laughs> the lateral one, uh -huh, where you sideways. Lateral view is correct. So that's the entire one that we're going to do, okay? The lateral view, the sideways, where he looks like he's walking. Okay, so number one, okay, there's that triangular bone from the middle of the back that's attached to the clavicle. What did we call that? Jen just gave it to you in the comments. There you go. Yes. Flood me with your comments. Scapula, scapula, scapula. All right, good. Perfect. Number two, that upper arm, long bone. The humerus. Now, number three 
it's so funny um because on the very first diagram we called them cervical vertebrae but for this diagram they're called intervertebral discs or disc intervertebral disc intervertebral disc yeah oh my god promise you spelled it correctly intervertebral disc <laughs> Lumbar, yeah. But the intervertebral disc. Then, I did not look this up, and I, sh I meant to. Let me, look, let me define this one, because this was weird. Okay, so... All right, so the next one, number four, right, is the iliac crest. Iliac crest. Number five is actually pointing to the ilium. Number four is the iliac crest, and number five is the ilium. Iliac crest. Mm -hmm. And then we have the ilium. Now, number six on that diagram, let me go back to the diagram here. Number six is the sacrum. Sacrum. That's okay if you're a fuse, if it's lagging and you're behind, no big deal. That's right, number six is the sacrum or sacrum. Potato, patata. What does Miriam say that we should, how we should pronounce it? Let's see here. Sacrum. Did y'all hear that? Sacrum. I don't know if you could hear it through the speaker or not. Sacrum. Then underneath that, number seven, is also called an ilium as well. Number seven on your diagram was also referred to as ilium. Oh, you could hear it? <laughs> I didn't know. I hope YouTube doesn't cut me off for that. It's not registered, I don't think. I don't own the rights to that that uh, uh, soundbite. Right. Oh, it, <laughs> it might not be, Marie. Sacrum. Okay. So number seven was also referred to as the ilium. Now, number eight, Cossacks. Cossacks. That's right, Jennifer. Cossacks. She just wanted you to label as many as you can within reason. Cossacks. Good job, you guys. You're spelling it right, too. Okay, we're just talking about bacteria coxy, and here we got coccyx. <laughs> it's the coccyx. All right, after the coccyx, we have number nine, which is the basic fibula. Basic fibula. OK, 
Okay. And then, of course, we have number 10. And number 10, I mean, you know, it could be a couple of different things there. You might call it tarsals. But they actually call it the navicular. I looked at it, I'm like, tarsals. But no, it's navicular. Navicular bone, a boat-shaped bone in the ankle or wrist, especially that in the ankle, which the talus and the cuneiform bones, between the talus and the cuneiform bones. Navicular. Here he's. Navicular. Navicular. So it's actually pointing to a navicular. Okay. Then after the navicular, we've got 11, which are the metatarsals. Obviously, right? That's why I was just going to say, hey, tarsals, metatarsals. But yeah, metatarsals. Then 12 is obviously the phalanges or phalanxes, like we like to call them lately. <laughs> 12 is the phalanges. So we have metatarsals and then we have phalanges. Those toes. Then we go back up to the face, up to the top. Number 13, the mandible. The mandible, yes. Square line jaw, masculine, yes. The mandible, it's the strong, it's the strong bone of the, it's the strongest bone of the head to the skull. The mandible. It's crazy, you guys, when you think about your nervous system, there's tons of uh, nerves and stuff that go in and out of your bones um, through pores and stuff like that or, you know, places. Um, I don't know if you guys know much about Bell's palsy, um, but this is a kind of thing that I've actually suffered from. Um, I had heard of Bell's palsy before. As a child growing up, I was always told, never leave, never go to bed with your head wet, your hair wet, um, or never go to bed with your hair wet next to a, a window at night because it gets cool and it's going to get so cool that it'll freeze your face. It'll give you Bell's palsy is what I've always heard. Um, it was an old wives' tale, you know, those things that you hear. Um, but I, I and I'd heard, um, there was a friend that I went to school with, um, I'm sorry, not a, a friend of mine that she, she was a student, um, uh, Christina, she had Bell's palsy and, and it lingered with her for her, in her adult life. And uh, um, uh, it, it, Bell's palsy can be temporary, It can't, but it can also have lasting effects. I actually had Bell's palsy two times, almost three times. Um, it is scary to wake up. Um, I, I woke up one morning and I could not uh, speak properly. I was, you know, like I'd had a stroke. One side of my face was was um, uh, not moving at all. And um, even kind of a little drool, like one side of my face. And you may even kind of, as I'm looking at myself talking them, uh, in the BAM now, I even kind of feel like this side of my face. This is one of the sides. I ha I've had it on both sides, and and I can even see by looking at my mouth, I don't operate quite like I should. But um, um, you know, so massage helps and stuff. But no, what I found out because I I was so tripping out about it, I'm like, oh my god, what could cause this? I thought maybe I had an abscess in my jaw from a tooth or something, because um, I did have at the time some tooth pain too, and and so I thought maybe it had abscessed and it caused uh, um, no, not just numbness, a, a paralysis. It was paralysis. It would not move. Um, I couldn't close my eye all the way. 
I couldn't move the side. Of my, I had to talk out of the other side of my mouth. Um, a lot, a lot was crazy, and it was numb too. Yeah, um, but yeah, uh, but what I did learn is that. Um, it can be brought on by a lot of different things. They really don't know a lot about it. It can be brought on by stress, which is probably what it was for me at the time. But also I learned that sinus infections and inflammation, swelling, you know, I have bad allergies here in Austin. Um, I didn't, you know, I'm sure you've heard that story many times how people get allergies. Um, um, but what ended up happening, it, it, what one of the possible things was is inflammation in the body constricted the nerves around my sinus area and caused paralysis, might have caused paralysis. That was one option. And so I just found that really interesting to know that, you know, that something as simple as inflammation can cause a paralysis because nerves are going in and out of your, your skeleton on the right side of my face. It went away after steroids and acupuncture. Oh, induced by stress. Yeah. Mine too. Uh, it took about two weeks. Um, I was so embarrassed to go to work, you guys. I was like, no, nobody could see me. And then my, we had a Christmas party, and Marissa took a picture of me and posted it. I'm like, and I'm all like, you know, like my face is all like this. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't even want to move it like that because I think I, I think I still suffer from it from time to time. Like I have to focus and I have to really, uh, but it, it, but I did it this one. Then it went uh, a, a month or so later, it happened to the other side of my face. And I thought for sure all my all my coworkers were gonna think I was full of crap, you know, that it really like it doesn't happen twice for somebody, really. But it did on the other side of my face. And it was really scary. But yes, yeah, so I've had it like two times, almost three times. Yeah. Um the medication that that I, um, uh, that I take was just for sinuses and stuff. But yeah, it's crazy. Our bodies are weird. They're really weird. But uh, anyway, so yeah, the nerves go in and out of the of the bones and stuff. So the mandible, um, you know, you got major arteries and major nerves and stuff. And so that's why you don't ever want to mess with getting an infection in your mouth because it can get into the bloodstream and go straight to your brain and cause, you know, sepsis or death or whatever. You know, it's, it's crazy. Our bodies are amazing. But yeah, number 13 is the mandible. Number 14 is pointing to something called the acromion. Acromion. Am I saying that right? I mean, what's Webster say? A chromion. It says here, in the human anatomy, the acromion is a voting process in the scapula or shoulder blade together with this. Oh, it's a process. Hmm, interesting. The diagram clearly. Acromion. It froze. Okay, no worries. All right, number 15. Got your clavicle. Number 16. That's okay. Don't worry if it's lagging. We're almost done. So hang tight. We're almost done. We have the clavicle here in front number 15. We have the femur, number 16. Number 17, the patella. I'm telling you, it's the patella. Tibia. Number 18 is the tibia. And then last but not least is the talus, T-A-L-U-S. The large bone in the ankle that articulates with the tibia of the leg. So it helps for movement. The talus, T A L U S. Number 19 is the talus. All right, one last skeleton, little squatty thing on the back. 
with the boxes to fill in. Let's just quickly go over those and then we'll take our final roll call. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for participating today. You guys have done awesome. Um, you're doing great, aces. All right, so we're going to go down the left-hand side of that human skeleton, the little squatty thing. We're going to quickly just name them down. We've got the clavicle. Then we have the scapula. Then we have ribs. Then we have vertebrae. Then we have pelvis, patella, and phalanges. That's the left-hand side. Clavicle, scapula, ribs, vertebrae, pelvis, patella, and phalanges. If you guys didn't um, have this printed out and you're not diagramming, I get it. You've already defined these terms, so it's not a big deal. You wanted to draw them. The right-hand side, we're going to finish up. Almost done. Okay. Do I need to repeat the left-hand side? Or you got them? I think you're good. Let's do the right-hand side. Cranium. The cranium. After the cranium, we have the humerus. After the humerus, we have the ulna, ulna. I don't know why I want to sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger, ulna, ulna. And we have the radius, the radius. Then down to the leg, I know you good. You got him, all right. Then we got femur. The big bone of the leg, fibula, and tibia. Yay! You guys did it. So proud of you. So, so proud of you. That's all I have for you today, you guys. Um, <clears throat> one last final roll call, please, for Joanna so she can get you all. You'll come back from five to six with Katie. Wait. Oh, no, wait. It's not Katie. Who is it? Is it uh, Molly was earlier, so who's it five to six today? Why am I tripping? So final roll call. You're welcome, you guys. Thank you. I'm going to look for more funny pictures. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, the cute little pictures. Oh, the puppers like the kitties. The puppers. <laughs> I like this too. Cats always have attitudes. It blocks out more than harmful rays. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, this is gross. Note to self, stop after the third lick. <laughs> Five to six is with Kim, that's right. Five to six is with Kim. Y'all come back and see her too. Give me some likes. Hey, give me some love. Before you leave, get out the door if you hadn't already. Boop, boop, boop. And then show up for my girl Kim. Oh, how cute. Look, kitty. My cats would never let me dress them up. It's so cute. Oh, this is cute. The cat fell asleep. Last night, I, 
Last thing I remember is the fourth margarita. I'm totally jealous, y'all. I'm not in Austin, like y'all, or like some of y'all. I'm in Bastrop. I heard about somebody having margarita delivery. I'm like, what? That sounds really good right about now. See you guys later. Mwah. Thanks so much. I had fun. Wish y'all were here. We can hang out. <laughs> this, is, this is really bad. Fat cat. I've never heard of Krispy Kreme. Look at... <laughs> Fat cat. <laughs> Hmm. It was cute. Three words. Witness. Protection. Program. <laughs> Bye, everybody. See you back tomorrow. So, well, I'll see you back tomorrow when I'm in the front of the camera. But see you all later on, Kim. <laughs> Thank you. You guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, everybody.